Salah prayer, slat place. Sluit salawat, also salat, or namaz Persian, namaz in some languages, is one of the five pillars in the faith of Islam and an obligatory religious duty for every Muslim male and female, with certain exemptions based on taqwa. It is a physical, mental, and spiritual act of worship that is observed five times every day at prescribed times. When they do this, they must face Mecca. In this ritual, the worshipper starts standing, bows, prostrates themselves, and concludes while sitting on the ground. During each posture, the worshipper recites or reads certain verses, phrases and prayers. The word salah is commonly translated as prayer or communication to Allah. Muslims use the words dua or supplication when referring to the common definition of prayers which is reverent petitions made to God. Salah is preceded by ritual ablution. Salah consists of the repetition of a unit called a rak'ah place rak'at consisting of prescribed actions and words. The number of obligatory fard rakaat varies from two to four according to the time of day or other circumstances, such as Friday congregational worship, which has two rockets. Prayer is obligatory for all Muslims except those who are prepubescent, are menstruating, or are experiencing bleeding in the 40 days after childbirth. Every movement in the salah is accompanied by the takbir except the standing between the ruku and sujud, and the ending, which has a derivation of the Muslim greeting as salamu alaikum. Topic Terminology Salah Salah SLH Slat is an Arabic word whose basic meaning is communication. In its English usage, the reference of the word is almost always confined to the Muslim formal, obligatory described in this article. Translating salah as communication is not usually considered precise enough, as communication can indicate several different ways of relating to God. Personal communication or supplication is called du Arabic, dua literally, invocation, in Islamic usage. Muslims themselves use several terms to refer to salah depending on their language or culture. In many parts of the world, including many non-Arab countries, the Arabic term salat or salah is used. The other major term is the Persian word namaz, namaz used by speakers of the Indo-Iranian languages e.g., Persian, Kurdish, Urdu, Pashto, Silheti, Balochi, Bengali, Hindi, as well as Turkish, Russian, Chinese, Bosnian and Albanian. In North Caucasian languages, the term is lamaz lamaz in Chechen, chak kak in lak and kak in avar. In Indonesia, the term salat is officially used, as well as a local term sembayang means, communication, literally from the word semba, worship and hyang, god or deity is used too. <laughs> Salah in the Quran Am dalika el katabu la reba fihi hude lilmutakina ladina yamanuna bilghabi wayukamuna el salata wamama razaknaham yunfikuna waladina yamanuna bima anzila alaika wama anzila min kablika wabalaharati hum yukanuna alaika alay hude min rabahim walaika humu elmuflahuna. Translation, 2. This is the book about which there is no doubt, a guidance for those conscious of Allah. 3. Who believe in the unseen, establish prayer, and spend out of what we have provided for them. 4 and who believe in what has been revealed to you, and what was revealed before you, and of the hereafter they are certain. Point five. Those are upon guidance from their Lord, and those are the successful. Wakamua el salata watua lazata warawa ma el reina translation, and establish prayer and give zakah and bow with those who bow in worship and obedience. Guard your communication and middle communication, and stand before God devoutly obedient. Then if you fear on foot or riding, then when you become secure remember God as he has taught you that which you did not know previously, Al-Quran 2-238-239. And offer communication at the two ends of day and at the approach of night, indeed good deeds remove bad deeds, this is a reminder for those who remember, Al-Quran 11-114, Offer communication at the decline of the day until the darkness of night, and Quran at dawn, indeed Quran at dawn ever is a witness. And at night pray to Hajjid an extra for thee. It is expected that your Lord raise you to praised station. Al Quran 17 to 78 minus 79. Say call God or call merciful by whomever you call. He has good names and do not make your salah loud nor make silent and choose a path between them. Al Quran 17 to 110. 
and offer communication and pay zakah and obey messenger so that you may receive mercy. Al Quran 2456 and recite that is revealed to you as a book and offer communication, indeed communication prohibits immorality and wrongdoing, and remembrance of God is great, and God is aware of what you do." Al-Quran 29–45 Purpose and importance The chief purpose of Salah is to act as a person's communication with and remembrance of God. By reciting the opening, the first surah chapter of the Quran, as required in daily worship, the worshipper can stand before God, thank and praise Him, and ask for guidance along the straight path. In addition, daily worship reminds Muslims to give thanks for God's blessings and that submission to God takes precedence over all other concerns, thereby revolving their life around God and submitting to His will. Worship also serves as a formal method of dhikr or remembering God. Muslims believe that all prophets of God offered daily prayers and were humble in submission to the oneness of God. Muslims also believe that the main duty of the prophets of God is to teach mankind to humbly submit themselves to oneness of God. In Quran, it is written that, For, believers are those who, when God is mentioned, feel a tremor in their hearts, and when they hear his signs rehearsed, find their faith strengthened, and put all their trust in their Lord. To those whose hearts, when God is mentioned, are filled with fear, who show patient perseverance over their afflictions, keep up regular prayer, and spend in charity out of what we have bestowed upon them. Salah is also cited as a means of restraining a believer from social wrongs and moral deviancy. According to a hadith in the collection Sahih Bukhari, Muhammad considered Salah the best deed. The importance of the Salah was further demonstrated by Muhammad who on his deathbed announced, The Salah, I remind you of the Salah, and to treat well those who are in your power. <laughs> Conditions At the bottom of the central nave of the prayer hall there is a niche the mirab indicating the Qibla. This compulsory act of worship is obligatory for those who meet these conditions are Muslim are of sound mind have reached the age of puberty beginning at age 7 as recommended elements that make salah valid confidence of the time of worship facing the qibla with the chest facing the direction of the kaaba the ill and the old are allowed leniency with posture covering the aura clean clothes body place of prostration ritual purity wudu tayammum ghusl Praying in front of a sutra is recommended, the place of worship should be clean. In a few cases where blood is leaving the body, salah is forbidden until a later time. Women are not allowed to pray during their menses and for a period after childbirth. Preparation Cleanliness and dress Islam advises that salah be performed in a ritually clean environment. When worshipping, the clothes that are worn and the place of prayer must be clean. Both men and women are required to cover their bodies in reasonably loose-fitting garments. The well-known adage or hadith by al-Nawawi that, "...purity is half the faith." illustrates how Islam has incorporated and modified existing rules of purity in its religious system. Ritual ablution Before conducting salah, a Muslim has to perform a ritual ablution. The minor ablution is performed using water or sand when water is unavailable or not advisable to use for reasons such as illness. Wudu is performed by Muslims according to the instructions of God given in the Quran. O oh you who believe, when you rise up to prayer, wash your faces and your hands as far as the elbows, and wipe your heads and your feet to the ankles, and if you are under an obligation to perform a total ablution, then wash yourselves. and if you are sick or on a journey, or one of you come from the privy, or you have touched the women, and you cannot find water, betake yourselves to pure earth and wipe your faces and your hands therewith. Allah does not desire to put on you any difficulty, but He wishes to purify you and that He may complete his favor on you, so that you may be grateful." 
More specifically, wudu is performed by Muslims by washing the hands, mouth, nose, arms, face, hair often washing the hair is merely drawing the already wet hands from the fringe to the nape of the neck, ears, and feet three times each in that order, it is not obligatory to wash the hair three times, once is sufficient, and men must also wash their beard and mustache when washing the face. Call to prayer Adhan is the Islamic call to prayer, recited by the one known as the muezzin for the five obligatory prayers, traditionally from a tower called a minaret. A second call immediately before praying, known as the akama, is for the assembled Muslims in the prayer area to line up for the beginning of the prayers. Intention. The person should be conscious and aware of the particular salah that is being offered, whether it is obligatory, if it is a missed worship, performed individually or among the congregation, a shortened traveler's worship etc. The explicit verbalization of this intention is not required. The person should think his worship to be the last worship so that he may perform the best he can. Components. Each salah is made up of repeating units or cycles called rockets. The number of rockets for the five daily worships can be found below. People who find it physically difficult can perform salah in a way suitable for them. A basic rakat is made up of these parts. Topic: <laughs> Standing. If this is the first rakah then prayer is commenced by the saying of the takbir, which is Allahu Akbar transliteration, Allahu Akbar, meaning, Allah is greatest. The hands are raised up to the shoulders with palms facing the front i.e. qibla. This is done before, with or after saying the takbir. Both arms are placed on either the chest or above the navel. If this is the first rakat, a supplication praising Allah is said such as Subhanaka aluma wabahamdika watabaraka ismuka wataali jaduka wala al garika meaning glorified be you, all praise is yours, perfect is your name, most high is your majesty and greatness. None has the right to be worshipped but you, the only one God. Subhanaka lahuma, wa bai hamdika, wa tabaraka smuka, wa ta ala jataka, wa la laha gayaruk. The recitation of the Quran begins by asking refuge with God from the accursed devil by reciting Audu Bayali Mina Al Shawaitina Al Rajimi Audu Bay Lahi Mina S Satani Ar Rajim. Surah Al Fatiha is recited. For the first or second rakat only, the recitation of Al Fatiha is followed with a recitation from any other surah from the Quran of choice. The customary practice is reciting the ayahs in order found in the Quran. The takbir is said again and the hands are raised as previously described and the next position, bowing or ruku, begins. <inaudible> bowing ruku. The palms are placed on the knees. Ideally, fingers are spaced out. Some of many types of remembrances of God are recited for this situation such as Svan Arbi Alzim transliteration Subhana Rabbi El Azim, meaning, "...glorified be Allah, the greatest", three times or more. <laughs> Second standing Eye title is the standing again after Ruku. The back is straightened and the hands are raised as in takbir as mentioned before not raised in Hanafi and Maliki schools while saying SM al lmn hmdh transliteration samia allahu li man hamidahu meaning god listens and responds to the one who praises him Some of many praises to god are said for this situation such as arbiana elak alm transliteration rabban alaka alhamd meaning o lord all praise is for you the takbir is said and the hands can be raised as mentioned before as the next position not raised in Hanafi and Maliki schools. Topic: <inaudible> Prostration. Each cycle of prayer contains two prostrations. During the prostration, the nose and the forehead are placed on the ground along with the knees, palms and toes. 
Some of many types of remembrances of God are recited for this situation such as Svan Arbi Alali Wibhmbh transliteration Subana Rabbi Al Allah wa bi hamdihi meaning, "...glorified be my God, the Highest", three times or more. The takbir is said again and the hands can be raised as mentioned before not raised in Hanafi and Maliki schools while the next position, kneeling, begins. Sitting The person performing the prayer sits between the two prostrations. Second prostration Second prostrations are done exactly as the first time. The head is raised and the takbir is said again and the hands can be raised as mentioned before not raised in Hanafi and Maliki schools. For every second and last rakat only you would go to the sitting position again. Otherwise, the standing position begins again for the start of a new rakat. Second sitting If this is the second rakah, sitting is done as before. If this is not part of the second rakah, then the left thigh is leans against the ground and both feet are protruding from the right side with the right foot either upright or along the ground. The left palm leans on the left knee. The right index finger is pointed towards the Qibla. The Tashahud is recited. Greetings on Muhammad, called the as salatu Allah and nabi are recited. If this is not the last rakah, a new rakah begins by standing up again with the takbir and the hands can be raised as mentioned before. If this is the last rakah, the greetings of taslam are said to the right such as al-slam lykayam worped al transliteration, as salamu alaykum wa rahmatu la, meaning, peace and God's mercy be upon you, and then similarly to the left. Differences in practice The Islamic worship practiced by one Muslim may differ from another's in minor details, which can affect the precise actions and words involved. Differences arise because of different interpretations of the Islamic legal sources by the different schools of law in Sunni Islam, and by different legal traditions within Shia Islam. In the case of ritual worship these differences are generally minor, and should rarely cause dispute. Muslims believe that Muhammad practiced, taught, and disseminated the worship ritual in the whole community of Muslims and made it part of their life. The practice has, therefore, been concurrently and perpetually practiced by the community in each of the generations. The authority for the basic forms of the Salah is neither the Hadiths nor the Quran, but rather the consensus of Muslims. Differences also occur due to optional recommended rather than obligatory articles of prayer procedure, for example, which verses of the Quran to recite. A 2015 Pew Research Center study found that women are 2% more likely than men to pray on a daily basis. Shia Muslims, after the end of the prayer, raise their hands three times, reciting Allahu Akbar, and Sunnis just look at the left and right shoulder saying salams. Also, Shias in the second rakat often read, Kanut, which for Sunnis is often done after Salah. In each of the positions, the Muslim usually needs to consider these, which may vary between schools and gender. Position of legs and feet. Position of hands, including fingers. Place where eyes should focus. The minimum amount of adkar, recitation, depending upon whether the worshipper is imam or following the imam or praying alone. Loudness of recitation, audible, or moving of lips, or just listening steps that are compulsory or necessary in the five daily prayers. Ahmadi Muslims have the same salah practices as those belonging to the Hanafi madhab. Types of prayers Prayers in Islam are classified into four categories based on degrees of obligation, fard, wajib, sunnah, and nafl. The five daily prayers Muslims are commanded to perform prayers five times a day. These prayers are obligatory on every Muslim who has reached the age of puberty, with the exception being those who are mentally ill, too physically ill for it to be possible, menstruating, or experiencing postnatal bleeding. 
Those who are ill or otherwise physically unable to offer their prayers in the traditional form are permitted to offer their prayers while sitting or lying, as they are able. The five prayers are each assigned to certain prescribed times at which they must be performed, unless there is a compelling reason for not being able to perform them on time. These times are measured according to the movement of the sun. These are, near dawn farj, after midday has passed and the sun starts to tilt downwards, noon zur, in the afternoon asr, just after sunset maghrib, and around nightfall isha. Under some circumstances ritual worship can be shortened or combined according to prescribed procedures. In case a ritual worship is not performed at the right time, it must be performed later. Some Muslims offer voluntary prayers sunnah immediately before and after the prescribed fard prayers. Sunni Muslims classify these prayers as sunnah, while Shia consider them nafil. The number of rockets for each of the five obligatory prayers as well as the voluntary prayers before and after are listed below. Sunni Muslims also perform two rockets nafl voluntary after the Zuhr and Maghrib prayers. During the Isha prayer, they perform the two rockets nafl after the two sunnat muakkada and after the witr prayer. Table notes. Topic: Fard Salah. The Fard Salah are all of the compulsory Muslim prayers, the five daily prayers, as well as the Friday prayer and the Eid prayers, Eid prayers. Non-performance of any of these prayers renders one a non-Muslim according to the stricter Hanbali madhab of Sunni Islam, while the other Sunni madhabs simply consider doing so a major sin. However, all four madhabs agree by consensus that denial of the compulsory status of these prayers invalidates the faith of those who do so, rendering them non-Muslim. Fard prayers as with all fard actions are further classed as fard al ain obligation of the self and fard al kifaya obligation of sufficiency fard al ain are actions considered obligatory on individuals for which the individual will be held to account if the actions are neglected fard al kifaya are actions considered obligatory on the muslim community at large so that if some people within the community carry it out no muslim is considered blameworthy but if no one carries it out all incur a collective punishment Men are required to perform the fard salat in congregation behind an imam when they are able. According to most Islamic scholars, performing prayers in congregation is mustahab recommended for men, when they are able, but is neither required nor forbidden for women. Jumu'ah <inaudible> <inaudible> Salat al Jumu'ah is a congregational prayer on Friday, which replaces the Zur prayer. It is compulsory upon men to perform it in congregation, while women may perform it so or may perform Zur Salat instead. Salat al Jumu'ah consists of a sermon given by the speaker after which two rockets are performed. There is no Salat al Jumu'ah without a kutbah. Kutbah is supposed to be carefully listened as it replaces sawab of two rockets. Wajib Salat Wajib as Salat are compulsory, non-performance of which renders one a sinner. However, the evidence of the obligation is open to interpretation, with some of the madhab saying it is obligatory while others saying it is optional. To deny that a fard Salah is obligatory is an act of disbelief while denying the obligation of a Wajib Salat is not disbelief. There are some who believe that as the five prayers are obligatory, it automatically renders all other prayers optional. Sunnah Salah Sunnah Salah are optional and were additional voluntary prayers performed by Muhammad. They are of two types. The Sunnah Mu'akada, those practiced on a regular basis, which if abandoned cause the abandoner to be regarded as sinful by the Hanafi school and the Sunnah Ger Mu'akada, those practiced on a semi-regular practice by Muhammad about which all are agreed that their abandonment doesn't render one sinful. Certain Sunnah prayers have prescribed waqwarders associated with them. Those ordained for before each of the fard prayers must be performed between the first call to prayer and the second call which signifies the start of the fard prayer. Those sunnah ordained for after the fard prayers can be performed any time between the end of the fard prayers and the end of the current prayers waqt. 
Any amount of extra rockets may be offered, but most Madhib prescribe a certain number of rockets for each Sunnah Salah. NAFL Salah NAFL Salah supererogatory prayers are voluntary, and one may offer as many as he or she likes almost any time. There are many specific conditions or situations when one may wish to offer NAFL prayers. They cannot be offered at sunrise, true noon, or sunset. The prohibition against Salah at these times is to prevent the practice of sun worship. Salat al-Witr Witr is performed after the Salah of Isha dusk. Some Muslims consider Witr wajib while others consider it optional. It may contain any odd number of rockets from 1 to 11 according to the different schools of jurisprudence. However, Witr is most commonly offered with three rockets. To end prayers for the night after Isha, the odd-numbered rockets must have the niyyah of wajib ul layl, which is mandatory to close one's salah for that day. Shias offer this as a one rakat salah at the end of Salat al-layl, the night prayer, which is an optional prayer according to some Shia scholars, and a wajib obligatory prayer according to others. This is to be prayed any time after Isha, up until Farj. The best time to pray it is the last third of the night the night being divided into three, between Maghrib and Farj of that night. It is considered highly meritorious by all Shia Muslims, and is said to bring numerous benefits to the believer, mainly gaining proximity to Allah. There are various methods of Salat al-Layl's performance, including shorter and longer versions. In the longer version, the believer must perform eight nawafil salah in sets of two rockets each. Then they must pray a two rockets salah called Salat al-Shafa. This is to include Surah Nas after Surah Fatiha in the first rakat and Surah Falak after Surah Fatiha in the second rakat, and unusually no kunit, a dua recited before going into ruku, of the second rakat of most prayers performed by Shias. It is after this that the believer performs. Salat al Witr, its long method being, starting with Takbirat al Aram, then Surah Fatiha, then Surah Ikhlas, then Surah Falak, then Surah Nas, then the hands are raised to recite Kunit, upon which the believer can recite any dua, however, there are many recommended duas for this purpose. Within Kunit, the believer must pray for the forgiveness of forty believers, then further prayers are read where the believer asks for forgiveness for himself a certain number of times using specified phrases and amounts of time to repeat those phrases. The believer then completes the salah in the usual way, by completing his kunit, reciting takbir whilst raising his hands, going into ruku and reciting the usual phrase for that, then returning upright and reciting takbir whilst doing so and upon being upright recites Sami Allahu Liman Hamida Verily Allah has heard the one who has praised him thereupon the believer recites takbir whilst raising his hands and goes into sajda. He recites the proscribed phrase in Sajda rises, recites takbir whilst rising and then again whilst returning to Sajda, then rises with takbir again and recites tashahud and salam, thus ending this prayer. It is then optional to recite certain other duas and dhikr remembrance of Allah through certain phrases and some of his names being repeated. It is then recommended to perform sajda ash shukr prostration of thanks and to then recite ayat al-kursi the and then perform another sajda ash shukr. Eid Eid Salah is performed on the morning of Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Adha. The Eid prayer is most likely an individual obligation fard al and niyyah for both Eid Salah is made as wajib, though some Islamic scholars argue it is only a collective of the obligation fard al it consists of two rockets, with seven or three for the followers Imam Hanafi takbirs offered before the start of the first rakat and five or three for the followers of Imam Hanafi before the second. After the salah is completed, a sermon is offered. However, the kutbah is not an integral part of the Eid Salah. The Eid Salah must be offered between sunrise and true noon i.e. between the time periods for Farj and Zur. Istikara Salat al Istikara is a prayer performed when a Muslim needs guidance on a particular matter, such as whether they should marry a certain person. In order to perform this salah, one should pray a normal two rakat salah to completion. 
After completion one should say a dua called the istikara dua. The intention for the salah should be in one's heart to pray two rockets of salah followed by istikara. The salah can be performed at any of the times where salah is not forbidden. The salah must be performed in the Arabic language. Qada In certain circumstances one may be unable to perform one's prayer within the prescribed time period In this case, the prayer must be performed as soon as one is able to do so. Several ahadith narrate that Muhammad stated that permissible reasons to perform qada salah are forgetfulness and accidentally sleeping through the prescribed time. However, knowingly sleeping through the prescribed time for salah is deemed impermissible. Khazar and jam When traveling over long distances, one may shorten some prayers, a practice known as khazar. Furthermore, several prayer times may be joined, which is referred to as jam Khazar involves shortening the obligatory components of the Zur, Asr, and Isha prayers to two rockets. Jam combines the Zur and Asr prayers into one prayer offered between noon and sunset, and the Maghrib and Isha prayers into one between sunset and Farj. Neither Khazar nor Jam can be applied to the Farj prayer. There is no reference to Khazar during travel within the Quran itself. The Quran allows for Khazar when there is fear of attack, but does not forbid it for travel in non hostile circumstances. Sajda of forgetfulness During the ritual salat prayer, if a person forgets to do one of the actions of prayer he can make up for certain actions by performing two sujud at the end of the prayer. This can only be done if specific types of actions are forgotten by the person praying. Tahiyyatul Masjid Upon entering the mosque, Tahiyyatul Masjid may be performed, this is to pay respects to the mosque. Every Muslim entering the mosque is encouraged to perform these two rockets. Prayer in congregation Prayer in congregation is considered to have more social and spiritual benefit than praying by oneself. When praying in congregation, the people stand in straight parallel rows behind one person who conduct the prayer, called imam, and face the qibla. The imam is usually chosen to be a scholar or the one who has the best knowledge of the Quran, preferably someone who has memorized it In the first row behind the imam, if available, would be another hafiz to correct the imam in case a mistake is made during the performance of the salah. The prayer is performed as normal, with the congregation following the actions and movements of the imam as he performs the salah. <laughs> Standing arrangement For two people of the same gender, the imam would stand on the left and the other person is on the right. For more than two people, the imam stands one row ahead of the rest. When the worshippers consist of men and women combined, a man is chosen as the imam. In this situation, women are typically forbidden from performing this role. This point, though unanimously agreed on by the major schools of Islam, is disputed by some groups, based partly on a hadith whose interpretation is controversial. When the congregation consists entirely of women and pre-pubescent children, one woman is chosen as imam. When men, women, and children are praying, the children's rows are usually between the men's and women's rows, with the men at the front and women at the back. Another configuration is where the men's and women's rows are side by side, separated by a curtain or other barrier, with the primary intention being for there to be no direct line of sight between male and female worshippers, following a Quranic injunction toward men and women each lowering their gazes Quran Conducting The prayer commences with the Imam saying, Allahu Akbar, out loud. 
For the five daily prayers, the Imam would read the Surah Fatiha and a following section of the Quran out loud only for the first two rockets of Farj, Maghrib, and Isha. To move between positions, the Imam would say, Allahu Akbar, out loud, such as when going to the bowing position, except when standing up again from the bowing position, when the Imam would say, Samiallahu Liman Hamida, out loud. The prayer is concluded with the Imam saying the Taslim out loud. A worshipper who has joined a congregation prayer late after missing rockets is called a masbuk. The masbuk would join with the rest of the group in prayer, however, when the taslim is said at the end, he or she would not say the taslim but would instead stand up and continue for the number of rockets missed. If he or she joined after the bowing stage of a rakat, then he or she would have considered to have missed that rakat. The concept of Quranist Salah timings has been discussed in Hujat Allah al Baliya Arabic, Urdu by Shah Walula. He said that there are three Salah timings prayers instead of the five Salahs prayers. The number of regular Salah mentioned by their respective names in Arabic in the Quran are three as follows Salat Farj dawn prayer, As Salat al Wusta the middle prayer. Salat Sisha night prayer the other salah normally prayed by most Muslims are not explicitly mentioned in Quran by specific Arabic terms. Most Muslims pray them by giving reference to the Hadith of Muhammad, and the consensus of Muslims, whereas Quranists may only pray the three times mentioned. <laughs> salah timings according to Quranists Salah timings of Quran are mentioned, in particular three Salah times are described and that they are recorded in a written document. Also noted is the volume at which the Salah should be uttered, somewhere in between spoken aloud and spoken in a low tone. The time for performing Farj dawn prayer starts when the first thin ray of light is observed in the sky and ends at the first tariff. Terminal of the day, or sunrise the time for performing middle or solid al wusta can be observed from the moment the sun begins its descent from its highest point in the sky al -shams until sunset but before the darkness of the night al -layl starts to set in. Dulik ash shams can also mean sunset, it literally means the rubbing of the sun the most accepted meaning is that this means the apparent rubbing of the sun with the horizon at sunset. Although, the meaning of a declining noon sun can also be found in classical Arabic sources. Literally, it can imply a meaning of both sunset and dawn in its meaning of a sun making apparent contact i.e. rubbing with the horizon. The Quran, if we take the understanding of a declining noon sun implies that the time of the middle prayer ends with sunset. Some Quranists however believe that there are only two salah, dawn and dusk including the times of night close to these two periods, which is based on the Quran some groups like Al Al Quran and the submitters believe that the five salah as they are practiced by Muslims today were passed down from Abraham generationally through the Arabs and the children of Israel, to then be inherited by those who adopted the Quran and rejected by most Jews and Christians. As a ritual of the religion of Abraham, the emphasis on constantly mentioning of God in holy books is believed to be about the believer's righteous endeavors and not just performing salah. For instance, in 51 to 56, when God states. I did not create the jinn and the humans except to worship me." Worshipping God could not mean just performing the prayer ritual all day long. See also al Ghafir, Al-Afuw Dua Sabr Islamic term Tazba equals equals notes <laughs>